absolute garbage. I'm the trash man. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's science, just look it up. <laughs> Today we are jumping back, of course, into r slash neckbeard stories. Hooray! And this is one giant story about a beard known only as Artbeard. Posted by user Rainbow Quartz. It's taken a while to come together. I think there might even be a final part to it, but I just can't wait any longer. So we are going to dive into this thing head first, and we'll see how it goes. The Chronicles of Artbeard, part one. This is my first time making a post on Reddit. So this is a story about a neckbeard I went to college with in art. I don't think I can cover all the information in one part, so I'll probably divide this into several parts. For privacy reasons, the names have been changed, and the fun casting includes OP, a now graduated art student that just loves watching things fall apart. <laughs> Feel that. Sam, another art student about to graduate, and close ally, often was with me during these shenanigans. And of course, Artbeard, the man, the myth, the legend himself. <laughs> So I went to a private religious college for art and graphics. It sucked overall, and I did get the degree, but there was one part that was incredibly entertaining, and that is what we, that is a good chunk of the students, called the Chronicles of Artbeard, where we would track things that this guy had done or just daily parts of his life, because watching him in action was truly a sight to behold. Sure, it was a little pathetic sometimes, but after repeated attempts to help him, you just can't feel sorry for him. I promise, the more trouble he causes himself is purely his own fault. Artbeard is an almost 30-year-old man who I would describe as overweight, shaggy, greasy, brown-haired individual with a disgusting giant cyst on the side of his head that he refuses to get taken care of. <laughs> he should buy the little hat. <laughs> Talking about his beard, he had very little, mostly just patchy scraggly jaw hair and a mustache, but not insane like some. The main thing is that nasty ass cyst that he had on his head. There's plenty of strong photo evidence both Sam and I have seen that proves he's a hoarder, and his hygiene is obvious from this. From the photos of his art he posts to Facebook, you can clearly see in the background of the photo just how bad his living conditions are. His apartment has roughly four to five cats, trash is scattered everywhere with greasy cardboard boxes, a stained carpet that looks absolutely disgusting, and probably has never been even vacuumed. It's like this guy could have his own hoarders episode because it is nasty AF. But it gets better because another person, another graduate of the art program, has an account of when he finally moved out of the apartment. A coworker decided to move and ended up renting this apartment that had previously been rented by guess who? Well, when she moved in, the place was trashed. Carpet was holy, moldy, and hadn't been vacuumed probably the entire time he lived there. There were holes in the walls and doors, plus he had painted strange eyeball symbols and abstract colors and shapes all over the doors and even some of the walls. The owner of the building replaces the floors and doors, patch the walls, etc., but nothing could compare to the first night she spent in that lair that Artbeard had vacated. Upon opening the closet, she found the biggest, almost bloody looking eyeball in the back corner. It was kind of hard to see, but she was clearly scared, so she covered it and went to lay down for the night. Upon turning off the light, she was greeted with the final horror. Strange splatters and symbols and eyeballs were painted floor to ceiling in glow-in-the-dark paint. She didn't sleep much that night. <laughs> now, Artbeard didn't stink like a sewer like a lot of cliché neckies do. He wouldn't even stink up a room that he walked in, but I never got too close, just to be sure. People also reported that he had very bad oral hygiene, and it was pretty obvious that he rarely took a shower. Artbeard also worked at the local Papa John's, and that's going to get its own chapter. Artbeard has some characteristics that do define him as a neckbeard, although he isn't quite as bad towards women. He is in fact married. His wife, who I'll refer to as Artleg, the Artlegbeard, was not much better either, but that's a whole different story. Still, I would put Artbeard into the category of Neckbeard purely for his sense of entitlement, general disconnect from normal social behaviors, and affinity toward anime and swords, and explosiveness when not getting his way. Sounds fairly accurate to me, OP. The first conversation I had with him in Artleg is vague to me now, but it was low-key obvious he was somewhat mentally disabled. Maybe he had like Asperger's? 
He's of sound mind as far as we can tell, so he could definitely comprehend stuff. I saw Artbeard on and off throughout my freshman year. He could often be seen walking around campus in a large Akatsuki Naruto robe while having his phone blasting Linkin Park, sometimes a kawaii face mask, and on one occasion, I actually saw him carrying a katana. I don't think that lasted, because I'm pretty sure someone reported him, because he never carried it around again, more than likely due to campus safety. Other students have said that he always carries around pocket knives. Then, in the spring semester, I ended up having two classes with him, and holy hell, the cringe is real. <laughs> to give a little information about the school, this was not an official art school, just a private general college, so that means in art terms that anyone could join the art department. If you go to art-based schools, you have to apply with a portfolio and be approved based on your skill. This college, however, did not work that way, so people like Artbeard were allowed in. Hell yeah, dude, pay to play. <laughs> a seriously important note that we had not figured out until later was that he had actually been going to this college since early 2013. I started this college in 2016, and as of 2020, he is still going there, and he's still a sophomore. <laughs> Dude has to have some ridiculous debt because he finally lost financial aid at some point due to failing so much stuff, but he says, I won't give up on my dream to become an artist. <laughs> he's really good at painting eyeballs. <laughs> Easily the thing that made my blood pressure rise was taking classes with Artbeard. Jesus fucking Christ. The one thing that made me want to scream was when this motherfucker raised his hand. He would raise his hand in the middle of a lecture and then just ask the most randomest shit ever. And of course, he was a gamer, so during graphic design class, every time he rose his hand during the lectures, he would often interrupt the teacher, ask a question that wasn't related to the subject, or make a point that was often completely false. The peak of this was in my aesthetics class. This class was almost 95% discussion-based, to my great sadness. <laughs> we would read out of our book, write stuff down, and then have an in-class discussion. We would go around the room and each person would talk about something that we noticed or learned in the chapter, and the class would discuss points. This was hell at times, because Artbeard would raise his hand 50 million times to either talk about a video game, how he wanted to work for Blizzard, <laughs> or he would throw out art terminology words that he did not understand. No joke. When he would raise his hand, it felt like I was in Mob Psycho 100 because my irritation would just go 1, 26, 73. Anger boiled up so much that Sam would watch me and laugh to himself because this guy could kill all of your brain cells with how fucking stupid he was. I never directly confronted him on it, but one time he went to raise his hand and I think the aura of Satan himself must have possessed me because I remember looking up with the most hate possible filling my heart anger seething out of my eyeballs as I glared directly into his eyes. I wanted him to know how much I wanted to push him into a pit with my aura, and it must have worked because he slowly lowered his hand that time and said nothing. But sadly, this did not end the shenanigans. That's a very neckbeardy paragraph from the OP. <laughs> Artbeard did not reserve this just for art stuff, though. He was also reported by many others that he would debate and argue with teachers in all his other subject, and the account of Sam goes as following. Chemistry was one class that I knew I was going to hate, but when I found out Artbeard was going to be in the class with me, I knew it was going to be far worse. You see, Artbeard considers himself something of a science man. He knows all the knowledge on how black holes work, the elements, and on his own account, how to make water not water. <laughs> Every time this dude raised his hand, he would always interrupt the teacher. And no, I don't mean asking one or two questions sometimes. I mean, and I literally counted, an average of asking or something like 40 times every class period, and he'd try to get super deep with his ridiculous questions, or asked about something that even a second grader would know was not possible. One of them being where he thought it was possible to create a new element just because he thought he could which had the professor visibly baffled by what he was trying to say. Artbeard, of course, believes that he is absolutely right with this because he thinks he knows chemistry better than a professor who has dedicated the majority of her life to learning everything there is to study on chemistry, right? Ugh, it wasn't just me. Pretty much everyone in the class saw Artbeard as Ronald McDonald, saying that steel is magnetic and we just don't know it, 
or how black holes can open up more gateways to more black holes and more universes and shit like that. I mean, he has been in school for seven years, guys. I wouldn't discount him quite yet. <laughs> I'll be blunt. Artbeard has the worst art I have ever seen. Looking at his art fills you with a sense of pure, unfiltered cringe. I know people like to embellish their stories on here, but I am being 100% dead serious when I say that his art looked like pure trash. And not even the one man's trash is another man's treasure trash. Just absolute garbage. I'm the trash man. I seriously mean it when I say a five-year-old could draw better with their foot. Because the foot of a five-year-old probably has more creativity and skill than Artbeard ever will. We can't even classify him as an artist without insulting the general population. It's just that bad. I'd like to see some of OP's art. <laughs> His paintings look like he just took a shit all over the canvas, because when he mixes the paint, he makes mud with the colors, meaning he lacks a basic understanding of color theory. And his wrist is so hard on the lines, you would think that he would inevitably physically break the pencil with how hard he's pressing. For every art thing Artbeard would make, he would unart. What? <laughs> Bro, his damn sketchbook had like some mad weird shit in it too. And when we did sketchbook assignments, we had to present them so everybody always got out the popcorn because the shit this guy would draw was absolutely hilarious to see. Ah uh, yes, and then we move on to critiques. For non-art people, there's a huge difference between a critique and a criticism. A critique is a detailed analysis and evaluation of a work of art. No two people will experience the same reaction to a piece, but by having group discussion in an educational setting, the point of them was to improve while also sharpening the mind on understanding of what makes good art. Criticism is just being rude without reasoning in art discussion. So, an example of criticism. I don't like the way it looks because I think it looks stupid. An example of critique. I don't like the way you did the layout of this drawing. It's not balanced. For Artbeard, whether it be students or teachers, when people would point out blatant mistakes, he would always respond with, Oh, I know it is. Or, Well, that was part of my plan. Or when people would point out ways to improve the drawings, it was, I was thinking about doing that, but I decided to do this instead. Criticism isn't always rude, OP. It's constructive criticism, come on now. Always an excuse, or deflecting. There was no real helping him improve because he believed he already knew everything, or whatever anybody said was somehow already always in his plan. His plan to make these insanely shitty drawings, it seems. End of part one. TLDR. I don't know, bro. It seems to me like Artbeard's art is getting some sort of reaction, which is like the point of all art, isn't it? I mean, usually the reaction you want is like, ah, <laughs> wonder. But I mean, going for comedy, that's not a problem either. Artbeard should start up a webcomic with his weirdly drawn sketches, and I bet he'd kill it. <laughs> the internet loves weird shit. That's why neckbeard stories are so popular. OP is just looking to cringe at something. I mean, honestly, like I said earlier, I would like to see OP's art. Let's compare the two <laughs> in a blind test and let's see which one the general public seems to prefer, you know? Really great art is made by putting a piece of yourself into it. So if you don't have these educational walls up, I think you'd be able to make better art. But then again, I'm not an artist. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But anyways, let's get into part number two of Artbeard. The Chronicles of Artbeard Part 2. The Sophomore Review, The Second, and Last Chance. Now that we have the introduction finished, we can start to go in-depth as to why Artbeard is a shitty person. For those with a lot of natural sympathy who read Part 1, you might think I'm being a little harsh towards him, but the reason you should not feel sorry for him is because of several reasons. <laughs> The first that sets us upon this path is the sophomore review incident. At this college, they have what is called the sophomore review. It functions similarly with majors like music in a similar fashion. When you take so many credit hours, you're given an evaluation at sophomore level, and it's determined by a board of teachers whether the quality of your performance is good enough to continue, take upper level courses, become a junior, etc. When taking this test, you have two chances to pass. If you fail it twice, you can no longer be an art major, only an art minor. Now, the chances of passing this evaluation are pretty high, as long as you take good care of your artwork, don't let it get bent in the corners and have bad smudges, and as long as you do somewhat okay at art, 
you're very likely to pass. The main reasons people usually don't pass are in order of most likely. 1. They were late or didn't show up. 2. They didn't have enough work. The comfortable number is about 10 to 14 pieces of art. Usually it's the first one. In fact, about 95% of the students who fail this test twice more than likely just did not show up to the evaluation at all, both times. And the second reason, not having enough stuff to show, like having 7 things instead of 12. In order to not pass because of lack of skill, you have to be pretty bad at art, because the teachers are very lenient. So, I had already taken my own sophomore review the year prior, and Artbeard had his first try the same year as well. Well, no surprise, he did not pass. I assume there are many reasons why he did not pass on the first try, but number one was probably how bad his work was. Like I emphasized in part one, his work was absolutely horrendous. Elementary school children could probably draw better than Artbeard. And with that, the next year rolled around, and his second try came up. This is the part of the tale that shows some of Artbeard's shitty behavior. So, it was the week before the review, I was doing my own little thing, drowning in classes, being depressed, you know, usual college student business. Since I had already passed my review, I was a certified junior, and during painting class, Artbeard came up to me and asked me to help him out with preparing for his review, and I'm not an asshole, so I was like, sure bud, I don't mind helping you out, although I have a very intense schedule, so we need to meet at a certain time, and it has to be at that time. I made sure to drill it into his head that whatever time we set, it had to be that time because I was pulling around 18 credit hours, and 18 credit hours with almost all art courses, including being a full-time marching band student, there's basically no extra time for me. So we set a time, 10am to 11am on Monday. I planned this because at 11am I had an art history test. I figured that would work and would give us plenty of time to review absolutely everything. One hour? <laughs> I, in fact, had already looked at his work once before and mentioned cleaning the edges of his paintings because they were really messy, to which he replied his usual excuses. Oh, I know. And weirdly he said, He didn't think he could do it because of how heavy his hands were. <laughs> My hands are too heavy. <laughs> okay. Not really an excuse, but okay. Anywho, 10 a.m. on Monday rolls around. I head to the art building to get some last second cramming for the test with Sam. 10 a.m. No art beard. 10.30. Nope. 10.55. And with that, he never showed up. I headed to the class and took that test, no reviewing with art beard, even though I had set aside an hour of my time just for him. The studying part was just convenient. I probably wouldn't have studied if I didn't go to the art building to be honest, lol. So after my test, my next class, painting rolls around, the class that I have with Artbeard. The moment I step foot in the door, Artbeard strolls right up to me. Hey, Redacted, you gonna help me review my stuff now? I paused and tilted my head at him in confusion. Huh? What do you mean? We set aside that time for this morning to review and you never showed. That was the only free time I had, bro. I won't have time after class to do it. I had marching band almost immediately as soon as the class was over. He didn't say anything at first. I took my seat at my desk and started working on the assignment. Well, I guess being told no was not the thing he wanted to hear, because within the next couple minutes he started grumbling like a male Karen to himself, like the entire class couldn't hear him. He started mumbling to himself like a little man-child. Can't trust anybody. Nobody ever helps me with anything. I gotta do everything myself. This fucking c was sitting there grumbling and blaming me for not showing up during the only free time that I had like it's somehow my fault. Thankfully, the teacher, who we will call Sweet Grandma Molasses, <laughs> SGM for short, who's an ultimate cinnamon bun, had not walked into the class yet. I know people always say things like, well, if he had done one more thing, then I could have went AWOL. But this went on for about 10 minutes, and when I finally looked over to my friend, who we'll call Lauren, I'm naming her here because she has her own experiences with Artbeard, and I said to her very quietly, If this motherfucker says one more thing, I'm going to go off and embarrass him in front of this whole class. But strangely, it was like as if at this Christian college campus, God intervened. I don't know if Jesus himself whispered into this guy's mind to shut the fuck up, but all of a sudden he got real quiet. I'm not sure if it was just pure luck or if he somehow heard what I had said to Lauren, but 
He did shut up, so I let it go. Still, this was a glaringly obvious beginning towards his childish behavior, especially blaming others for his misfortunes, which we will discuss more in part 3. So, the end of the day review arrives, and I gotta admit, Artbeard is very determined. He got a whole ass haircut and dressed up in a fancy button up shirt and dress pants. Where's the matching fedora? <laughs> Sam and I were hopeful for Artbeard. It's not like either of us wanted him to fail. He could be a total baby at times, but I didn't wish anything ill on him, and I decided to just forget about the whole incident. We just happened to conveniently be there and decided it would be good to help the other students carry their artwork into the building. We didn't want to see any unfortunate bent paper because a lot of people's stuff wasn't wrapped up, so we both hung around. During this time, I stopped to look at Artbeard's collection that he chose to present and... <sighs> sigh. Everything was matted, but the work was rough. Pencil drawings that had really unsightly fingerprint smudges, paintings that were pure mud, but I noticed something different. In his pile of stuff was a box, specifically the box project from 3D Design. The point of the box project was to create something nice inside a random box, made of wood and sometimes with a door, typically with something that you think is important to you or a place that's important to you. Sam and I recall when doing this project, we'd made a scene of a beach because of memories or some shit. <laughs> The point is that you have to create something inside the box. This guy. This dude. This art beard. He filled the box with action figures. <laughs> no sculpting. No painting. Just action figures that he happened to have. I was stunned. He couldn't be serious. There's no fucking way this guy is going to present a box filled with stuff that he didn't make. It would be art suicide. Copyright and usage rights are big, big, big no-nos to avoid. I looked at him. Artbeard, are you... are you putting this in your show? He looked at it and perked up. <laughs> well, yeah, of course I am. It even has little lights in it. He reaches over and hits the on switch, and there are a couple of little Christmas lights in the box that flash on. While cute, this was still very bad. You can't present something with media that you didn't make. But I wasn't there to be his mother. Still, I did try to stop him. I tried to make it overwhelmingly obvious. Are you sure that you want to put that in? It's got things in it that you didn't specifically make. But Artbeard was having none of it. He was all confidence that this show was going to blow the teachers away. I would even learn down the line that the teacher he did the assignment for... The same teacher, who was also one of the people judging him in this evaluation, told him not to put this project in his presentation. I tried to carefully tell him not to put it in the show, but Artbeard knew everything according to him, because nothing I said deterred him. I looked at Sam, and we both exchanged a look of knowing, and both shook our heads and went in. We carried his stuff in, and another project he had was a grassy mountain range made out of boots. <laughs> For that assignment, you had to take a pair of shoes and make them into an environment. What? <laughs> the fake grass glued on the boots kept shedding everywhere, all over the table. I was as gentle as physically possible, and Artbeard had the nerve to criticize me to not get the stuff everywhere, even though this was his project. This project was so fickle that pieces fell off of it even with the most careful touch. I doubt him and his extremely heavy hands could have been more careful than I was with his stuff. In fact, I would bet you money on the table it would have been far worse if he was the one that had carried it in. After everything was set up, both Sam and I left him to his evaluation. Only the student getting evaluated and the teachers were allowed in. The results were not immediate. They normally announce the results a week later and... who oh boy, it was not pretty. <laughs> End of part two, TLDR. I wonder if there actually were just, like, shitty action figures in the box, or if they were, like, those anime figurines that are, like, $300 each. <laughs> Either way, it's, it's not going to make a difference. Copyright usage and such. But yeah, OP probably should have told him flat out, like, dude, this is, this is going to be the reason that you fail. Do not put it in. I mean, he was able to wire up lights in the box, stuff like that, so maybe he should be an electrician instead of an artist. I know I probably couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible with electricals. Apart from flipping a circuit breaker, I'll call an electrician every single time. OP does seem nicer in this part of the story. You know, he tries to help out and stuff, but 
this this guy needs more than just a helping hand. <laughs> you gotta lead him around, you know. But I mean, OP is also right in a way, you know. You can lead a horse to water, but try to make him drink, you know. <laughs> Some people are just stuck so far up their own asses. And maybe, just maybe, this is all for the best, you know? <laughs> he fails it a second time. Can't get an art major anymore. He has to go into an art minor. So good. Just just put him out of his misery, you know? Somebody had to shoot old Yeller. <laughs> but anyways, let's jump into part three and see just how bad the results are. The Chronicles of Artbeard, part three. The Fallout. Crushed dreams and endless memes. <laughs> After the review was over for the day, both Sam and I waited with bated breath for the results. Sam was always my greatest pal during my endeavors of this shitty art department, so we both had strong mutual understanding that this was going to be a shitstorm when they announced the results. <laughs> it does seem like a shitty art department, doesn't it? They're like, put a box, put a scene in a box, make a environment out of shoes. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> then again, maybe it's better than drawing a fruit basket or some shit like that. You really can't teach art. You either have a proclivity or you don't. Otherwise, you go into art history or something. Anyways, I digress. Now, normally, they do announce the results, usually writing the people's names who passed on a sheet of paper and putting it out in the lobby for everybody to see. However, this time, they must have decided that it would be wise to tell each student individually, probably to not embarrass anyone this time, because this time we had a higher turnout of failure. Like I said in part two, the main reason students failed was because they literally didn't show up. We had three who physically never showed up, so no surprise why they failed. And for one of them, this was his second try. His art really sucked too, though, if I'm being honest. Just a little better than Artbeard. Funny thing I didn't mention, Sam was also one of the people who was getting evaluated that semester, now that I recall, because I had originally shown up to help him carry stuff in. Then we both opted to help carry other stuff. I digress. Oh, how the turntables. <laughs> ah, the day had come. Each student went alone into sweet Grandma Molasses's office. <laughs> Doesn't sound very intimidating. Sweet Grandma Molasses was, at the time, the head of the art department, and the students were given their results. Sam, of course, passed, but stuck behind to watch the fallout. I was not there to witness it because I had something else to attend to, but he relayed all the information of how it went down. When Artbeard stepped out of the office, he looked pretty dejected. He didn't say anything, but he ran out of the art building like a character running away in an anime, and Sam could see that he was crying. Honestly, even now, I do feel slightly bad for Artbeard. It has to suck getting your dreams crushed even if you'll probably never amount to anything related to it in the long run. It was that same day, actually, that I spoke with the wife of one of the teachers who had evaluated him, as we were pretty good friends. When speaking with her, she confirmed what both Sam and I had thought. She said while her husband did feel bad about it, it would be kind of cruel to let Artbeard pass, and unfair to the other students who worked so hard. Cruel because even if Artbeard did somehow, by the miracle of Jesus, graduate, there is no way that he would ever get a job in the art industry. The only people who could possibly want to hire him would have to be blind and deaf. Artbeard certainly could never get a job working in a gallery, greeting, and definitely not exhibiting. You see, even a casual conversation with Artbeard would make you feel uncomfortable. Trust me on this one. So, in the majority opinion of the art population at this school, it was much wiser to not let him through. It's cruel to let someone continue when they have no real way of succeeding. On top of that, the department has to maintain a level of quality because the work is representing a college after all, and Artbeard is nowhere even close to a minuscule amount of good standard. It almost makes you feel sorry for him. Almost. Because when he stepped outside, Artleg was there to meet him, and that sadness quickly turned into unbridled rage. Artbeard started screaming his head off about how Sweet Grandma Molasses had discriminated against him. And that was the real reason that he failed the review, and believe me, it was not a moderate yell, it was a full-blown screech. Artbeard was yelling at the top of his lungs about how he had been cheated on something horrible, and how Sweet Grandma Molasses had it out for him because he was dyslexic, and that she was somehow the real reason that this had happened. 
As a side note, Sweet Grandma Molasses is the sweetest old woman you will ever meet. Like, she is so kind and gentle, and constantly caring about your well-being, and no, she did not have it out for Artbeard, obviously. She was just kind of there to be the mental punching bag. Artbeard did not let this go. In fact, you could almost say he was a sore loser about it. Thus begin the era of, as Sam likes to call it, the Sweet Grandma Molasses era. Because almost every single day, Artbeard was constantly blaming all of his, all of his misfortunes on Sweet Grandma Molasses. Artbeard had now grown a personal vendetta against the art department that had wronged him, and he wanted to make sure that everyone knew exactly how he felt. Sure, it's okay to be upset that things didn't go well, but Artbeard had no accountability in this story. If I'm being blunt, he was set up to fail from the beginning with his unwillingness to learn, his know-it-all attitude, and his general disregard for how reality actually works. <laughs> But now isn't the time for reasoning. Now is the time for anger. <laughs> because the thing that happened next was in painting class the very next day. We all came to class as normal, and that day an assignment was due. So sweet Grandma Molasses told us to put all of our work up against the wall in a stack near the door. This was a landscape painting, I believe. And everyone went and put their stuff up. Everyone except Artbeard. His painting, which was rough, and conveniently it was sitting near the wall. He had not brought it up to be turned in, but it was somehow near the stack of paintings the students had brought up to turn in. There were naturally lots of paintings up against the wall. Most students would put them up to dry, so it wasn't that unusual. So Sweet Grandma Molasses had already taken the work that was finished, remember I said finished, when she noticed that Artbeard's painting was sitting against the door. Well, she accidentally picked up Artbeard's work because she thought he was done with it. And instead of saying, like, I'm sorry, I haven't completed this yet, my bad, ha <laughs> ha, this motherfucker gets heated and yells out, I'm not finished with it yet! You could hear a pin drop in that class. It was so quiet. Everyone just silently stared at Artbeard, some of their mouths agape. Sweet Grandma Molasses didn't really give a fuck, but went, alrighty, and set the painting back down, and went to her office to grade our work. Since she was gone, Artbeard wasted no time to go on a mini rant to the other students, who tried very hard to ignore his presence completely. He was so mad, saying, mostly out loud to himself again, This was a prime example of sweet Grandma Molasses trying to set him up for failure since he wasn't done with his shit. This of course annoyed many, and made the ire boil up in the other students because this son of a bitch was talking shit about our grandma. Nobody said anything, but if you read the room, you could cut through the tension with a knife. Sweet Grandma Molasses then returned to the class about 30 minutes later, and I can't remember what was said to get Artbeard talking to her, but she said at one point, Okay, why didn't you let me know you were finished? I was only collecting finished stuff. And since of course he had no backup, Artbeard window XP crashed as logic did not compute in his tiny brain. Now it should be mentioned that this was near the end of the semester, so everyone was cramming at the last minute to try and get their art finished for the final grades. This meant that in the painting room, there were a lot of paintings laid around the room to dry. Artbeard had another piece of work lying almost in the middle of the walkway, and yes, he could have easily put it out of the walkway. You see, someone accidentally stepped on Artbeard's painting. It was Sam, and he was way too scared to tell us, so he just dipped when all this happened. It wasn't a horrible footprint, not painfully obvious. In fact, a lot of us didn't even notice until someone pointed it out. That alone should tell you how messy and rough his work is. And at this, Artbeard started flipping his shit, screaming again how SOMEONE DID THIS ON PURPOSE! He started yelling profanities, demanding to know WHO DID THIS! When another art teacher walked in and said that he needed to be quiet because she was having a class next door and he was disrupting that class. Artbeard was not listening though. He was blinded by rage and continued to rant about how this shit always happens to him. And she told him, okay, I get that, but you really need to calm down. This teacher was a real asshole, but I admit I will applaud her ability to get him to calm down for 10 seconds. Artbeard then stormed out of the art building. We were all about to leave anyway, so we trailed out after him. I went outside first to find that Artleg was there to meet him and he was back to yelling again. Artleg looked low-key tired of his antics, but she was still trying to calm him down. I yeeted myself out of there and went home. 
So yeah, that's a good chunk of that part of the saga. Artbeard caused himself more pain and delusion by blaming everything on someone else, never really taking accountability for his laziness, and treating others like crap when things didn't go his way. End of part three, TLDR. Ah, this is the part that turned it all around. <laughs> like, the first part, I'm like, why is OP ripping on Artbeard? The second part, I felt kind of bad for him. And then the third part, it, it's all demonstrated. I'm like, oh god, what a douche. <laughs> He, he reaps what he sows, you know what I mean? This is, this is unacceptable. From anyone, but especially to attack a sweet old lady. Don't yell at an old lady, for God's sake, neckbeard scumbag. <laughs> I would still like some examples of his art just to see how bad it is, but if he couldn't turn it in on time, maybe he was trying his, his very best, but yeah, sometimes your best isn't good enough. That's just how it be sometimes. The, the world is cruel, <laughs> you know? Just taking it all personally for his own lack of talent. Yep, that's... <laughs> that's about par for the course with neckbeards, I suppose. The Chronicles of Artbeard. Final. Part 4. The finale. Bad pizza, bad vibes, and bad beards. Now, I gave this OP kind of a hard time, but he seemed to take it all in stride. And uh, even gives me a couple of mentions in this part, which I think is pretty cool. So... If you're confused why the final part is showing up in another Neckbeard subreddit, it's because this was originally meant for r slash Neckbeard stories, but it kept getting removed. If you want to read everything up until this point for a better understanding, view my profile and read The Chronicle of Artbeard Part 1. And it was actually Part 1 through Part 3, and you can find that link in the description as per usual, unless I forgot it, which sometimes I do, <laughs> but I hope I didn't today. Alright, boys and girls. This is the final installment of the saga of Artbeard. I know, it is sad, but all good things must come to an end. Mostly because after this, we will be up to the present time. There are two last major things that happened in this tale, and some smaller subcategory stories. The two major things were Artbeard's quest to prove to the art department that he was talented by building his own handmade guitar, and his job at Papa John's built his own guitar? Bro, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> Mass respect for Artbeard. So it's about a year after the sophomore review, and Artbeard is now an art minor and now a mass communications major. I felt deeply sorry for the mass communications people because now Artbeard was their problem, and I would get some more hilarious stories from them about how he was acting like he knew it all with the teachers. Some things never change, lol. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? As I mentioned before, I was in marching band, and I just so happened to be in band with Artbeard's stepbrother. Anytime Artbeard would do some stupid shit, I would always tell him about it, and we would laugh at Artbeard's antics. I learned from his brother that his mom had a pretty decent amount of money, but Artbeard refused to speak to her because of her not supporting him going with art, and how he was the black sheep of the family for it. Well, that is kind of a sad story, isn't it? He should be able to pursue his passions, damn it. Now, in reality, what it actually was, was that Artbeard's mom knew he couldn't succeed in art, and had been desperately pleading with him to drop out because his constant failings with classes was making him rack up debt. I'm talking probably well over 100000 and he works a minimum wage job. Oh, see, now I see it from the mom's point of view. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna make it, just, just pick something else. His brother also said that because he had repeatedly refused, his mom told Artbeard that she would not drain her savings to bail him out when it was clearly obvious that this wasn't going to work for him. Artbeard pretty much took full offense, like, this was her not believing in him. However, I should repeat that this guy failed Freshman Composition 1 English over five times. <laughs> God. <laughs> At this school, you take general education classes and then your major classes. So for art, you pick an emphasis. This would be painting, sculpting, graphic design, that general stuff. When you take your emphasis, you have to take four courses related to that. I took graphic design, so I took courses graphic design one, two, three, and four. You get the idea. Artbeard was also in graphic design, but he couldn't even pass graphic design one. He'd already taken it twice by the time he got to his review, and he had been in painting one. Keep in mind that this was around year three of his time at this college, and he probably only passed classes that the main requirement was participation, like chapel. 
Remember, this is a Christian college, so the requirement is to attend chapel services. They sometimes have motivational speakers or something preacher-related. Artbeard is also dyslexic, which I think we mentioned before in the last story, and that would be another reason why he struggled with English classes. One of the funniest jokes between the art students was when we were doing a typography assignment, and typography involves making compositions and layouts with only words, no drawings or images. Well, Artbeard had decided to do something that said, Follow your dreams! But because he couldn't spell, he actually wrote, Fallow your dreams! <laughs> Isn't fallow for, like, uncultivated land? I guess it's fitting in this case. <laughs> and from then on, when something didn't go right when we were making something, someone would lean in and say, Hey, just fallow your dreams. <laughs> to be honest, he could have fixed these errors with a simple spell check, not hating on the fact that he's dyslexic, just the fact that he was too lazy to spell check. Artbeard also has an art page, and almost every single post has hilariously bad spelling errors. If you didn't know him personally, you would think his art page is a troll account, but sadly, it is deadly serious. His caption reads, My artwork might be odd, but it is good. Hey, at least he believes in himself. <laughs> and that's half the battle. Another grand adventure of Artbeard was him creating a guitar from scratch. Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. Shoo boy. I've played a musical instrument for a literal decade, and let's just say this creation was a treat. Artbeard worked on this thing for nearly two years, the second half of my time at this college. He technically made two guitars, but the second wasn't an improvement. <laughs> he cut a piece of wood into a rough guitar-like shape for the body, and he also used the same type of wood to make the neck and head as one single piece. The rest of the parts, he bought online. <laughs> He did this process in the 3D room where the power tools were, and I recall one of my fellow graduates recounting how insanely uncomfortable she was being in the room with him, because there was one time that she was stuck in there alone with him. Art beard and power tools, it's a bad combo. <laughs> she remembers he got mad at something not going right, and he threw a chair across the room, only a couple of feet away from her. Jesus. Art beard was prone to tantrums like these, and this room was super small. You could barely fit a table in there after all the tools, so I would have been mildly freaked out too. Yeah, mildly. <laughs> and then the day of celebration finally came. Artbeard had finished the guitar. <laughs> Homeboy walked around campus like he had won the gold medal, carrying his guitar everywhere. I was one of the first people he ran into, as the music department was on top of the basement, and that's where the sculpting and 3D rooms were. I was just walking out from a concert band rehearsal when Artbeard ran up to me excited. Hey, OP, check it out. I finally finished the guitar. You know, if he's happy with it, that's really what's important. Full disclosure, I'm glad he has his own projects and wants to try and craft stuff. That's a good thing. It wasn't assignment related, purely a passion project, but it looked hilariously bad. <laughs> he did treat the wood with varnish, which I do think looked pretty good but the neck was completely crooked from the attachment to the body. <laughs> Good luck tuning that sucker. Attached to the guitar was the strings, the tuners, and a little board piece. I would say the parts that looked pretty alright were entirely the pieces that he bought online and attached to the wood. <laughs> I strummed the guitar, and it was flatter than a cutting board. Highly out of tune. I remember adding in some comedic relief. Wowee, you might want to tune this bad boy first. She's, uh, pretty flat, bud. But no amount of tuning would save this musical abomination. Because it was already jacked up, it wouldn't matter how much you tuned it, half of the fucking thing was crooked. <laughs> oh, poor Artbeard. <laughs> but Artbeard, regardless, was proud of his accomplishment. And I was happy that he was happy. So he definitely made sure to walk around the entire art department, and as Sweet Grandma Molasses would describe him normally coming to bother the teacher with something, Artbeard ambushed all of the professors to show off his new creation. Funny, the head of graphic design is a pretty well-humored guy, and when Artbeard showed him the guitar, he said, Well, does it play? To which Artbeard had a Windows XP meltdown in his head because it did not do it even slightly well. 
Unfortunately, that's like the whole point of a guitar. So, <laughs> mission failed. Some say he rode that highway train to musical stardom or complete cringe. You tell me. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is pretty cringe. I can appreciate passion, but when it doesn't do the one thing that it's designed to do, uh, I can't really sign off on that, bud. Art is sort of nebulous, you know, and people can think that bad art looks good or vice versa, but a guitar, it's supposed to serve a purpose. And if it doesn't serve that purpose, then objectively, mission failed. Anyways, Papa John's. Now, I mentioned that Artbeard worked at Papa John's. Art Leg also worked at the adjacent grill that was in the same building about 10 feet away. What was good for on-campus students was that part of the meal plan added $200 a semester to spend on restaurants outside of the cafeteria. The grill and Papa John's were some of the choices if you wanted to eat anything else. This is a small AF campus, literally... The art building, the music building, the Papa John's, and Artbeard's apartment were all on the same street, so Artbeard would walk everywhere. If you were casually walking down the street at the same time, you had to mentally prepare yourself to get flagged down by Artbeard because he would do this constantly. <laughs> I mention this because it will be part of a point in a moment. I bet he loves it, bro. He's walking down the street saying, like, hi to all his friends, except those people don't really want to talk to him. But again, as long as he's happy. All was calm that day. Weather was early winter. It was chilly outside, but those were the best times to wear something comfortable. It was a few minutes after class had ended. This was an art course, so me and several students were staying over in the sculpting room to get our projects finished. I think something was due the next day. Everything was pretty chill. Until suddenly, Art Beard burst through the door. The sculpture teacher asked how he was doing, and he promptly yelled, not great, because apparently I got fired. This got everyone's attention, especially mine, so I decided to take a bite and ask what happened. These assholes fired me because I took a pen from the office. No, I'm serious. He really said that. My friend Sam also said that he made the same claim in chemistry. They've been plotting against me since the beginning because they hate me. Seems to be like a recurring theme. He's got these delusions of grandeur. Nobody is plotting against you, okay? Nobody cares, probably. <laughs> well, I just went along with it and didn't say much, but I pondered. Something about this story seems vaguely familiar, and there are some holes. There has to be. This, however, was not even close to the reason why Artbeard had been fired. Ooh, the plot thickens. In fact, we were almost certain he knew why he was fired, but decided to make up some bullshit reason to look less bad. One convenient thing about this is that Sam was good friends with some of the people who worked at Papa John's. Hell, there was even another art person that worked there too. But this is a small town. Everybody knows each other. Before Artbeard started working at Papa John's, the customer satisfaction was a solid 90%, which is pretty good for a fast food place. And most of the customers were millennials and Gen Z, that beautiful 90% went all the way down to a 75% in the six months that Artbeard started working there. Sam's guy, who was a manager at the time, said the main reason for firing Artbeard was because of hygiene. But there were also reports and calls from customers who were just plain creeped out by Artbeard. <laughs> Mainly because when Artbeard would drive the company car and deliver pizzas, he would start talking to customers and try to enter their houses to have a discussion with them. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, you expect a bit of creepiness from a pizza guy. I have a pretty high threshold for pizza guys, but trying to come into my house, yeah, that's, that's gonna mean a comment card or something. Please don't ever do this. But, you know, you, you wouldn't assume that you have to tell most people that. <laughs> Imagine a person coming to drop off your food Pizza guy gets chatty with you and talks your head off, and then tries to enter your house to discuss it further. It just screams bad touch. The majority of calls that tanked the 90% score had to do with incidents like that, along with customer complaints that he was just greasy and nasty as hell when he delivered the pizza. This caused people to question the cleanliness of the entire establishment. Speaking of driving the company car, Artbeard also had horrible delivery times. Either he took 55 plus minutes to deliver one pizza, or if he had already delivered said pizza, he would just goof off and cruise around town, 
flagging down every person he remotely recognized instead of driving back to work. God damn, dude. I don't know if Artbeard's ever going to make it in the real world. <laughs> it was the culmination of all this that made management decide to fire Artbeard. Yet according to Artbeard, this is another prime example of people having it out for him. Blaming everyone else for his problems rather than just cleaning himself up. He did get a job at Little Caesars, but I don't think it lasted very long. Present time. It was literally two years that both Sam, me, and the sculpting professor begged Artbeard to go into welding. He had no artistic talent, but he was pretty good with his hands. Even though his guitar was absolute shit, he was pretty decent at working with tools. For two years, he did not listen. And after seven years of failure, over $100,000 in debt, I can say that Artbeard finally went into welding. And that's pretty much it. I'm sure there are more smaller stories, but we've reached the present time. If something radical happens in the future, I'll be sure to post it here. But for now, thanks for reading. I had way too much fun typing this up. End? Question mark. <laughs> TLDR. Also, I just noticed that Red X did a read of the Artbeard story on YouTube. Hey! And reading the comments and the reader's thoughts, I feel I should clarify some details that may be missing. Nice. I feel everyone's opinions on the way that I presented this is totally valid. Some moments were driven by frustration, and I do promise both me, the students, and the faculty tried hard to help Artbeard succeed, but truthfully, he was just unwilling to learn, and extremely lazy. You can find value in everyone's art. Even things that don't look objectively good succeed at having great meaning to others. I was half tempted to share some of Artbeard's work because I wanted to emphasize that I wasn't exaggerating but I didn't want to invade Artbeard's privacy or make it possible for people to link it back to him. Cyberbullying can be very brutal, and I didn't want to cause any harm to him. So, best way to describe it is in terms of how his art looked and how he acted, the best comparison would be kind of like Chris Chan's work. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hell, he could definitely get some satirical value because that's what I got out of it. The only issue is that it was entirely unintentional on his part, and it wasn't all about his art. If it was all about his art, then I'd be a real asshole and he wouldn't have been classified as a neckbeard. Truly, the biggest problem with Artbeard was his behavior. Nobody wanted him to fail. He did that to himself. Salient points, OP. God damn, now I feel kind of bad going after you in the first story. <laughs> My bad, bro. Also, mentioning me as an artist, I am not OP level art. I'd give myself like a 6 or 7 out of 10 in art. And even though I did graduate, I don't consider myself anything special. I do have publishing gigs and work along with personal projects, and that is entirely by choice. I could work at a graphics firm, but I chose to pursue my own stuff. I really enjoyed reading the comments and seeing others' opinions, though. Whether you thought it was justified or thought I was a douche, thanks for taking the time to listen to this wacky story. And can someone link this part to Red X, please? I desperately want him to read this part for more lols. <laughs> While nobody did send me this part, somebody did ask on the Artbeard video recently if I ever read the final part, which kind of jogged my memory and made me come back to this thing. Unfortunately, it's like super late, <laughs> 26 days later. That's not the freshest daily Reddit content that we know and love. But hey, I did get around to it. So considering everything that OP said, yeah, I'm definitely starting to see his side of the story. I definitely understand making a post in frustration and not necessarily including every single detail, or perhaps just including the details in the wrong order, because if we had gotten into, you know, how he slacks off from his job and gets mad at all the teachers for his own failings and such, before part one and two, where OP is basically ranting about him being a horrible artist, I probably would have come away with a really different perspective on the entire thing. It definitely matters how you present things, so... Now that we have the entire picture, I can stand back and look at it. I say, yeah, OP is probably right, <laughs> you know? This guy is an absolute mess. He thinks that everybody is just out to get him, and it's that kind of mindset that makes it impossible for him to self-reflect and look at his actions and see exactly why people are responding to him the way that they are, you know? I don't know if it will ever change. I definitely hope that it will. He figures out how to be like, the best welder on the planet, goes into underwater welding and makes like a hundred thousand a year or something like that. That would be killer. Honestly, I, I do hope he turns it around and I hope the best for him. 
as I do with all the OPs and all the neckbeards, that's why I have the warning disclaimer before we start any of the episodes, and it says right in there, everybody deserves a second chance at redemption. While I wouldn't have tracked down Artbeard because his art was posted and tried to make his life a living hell, I do understand that I don't control the actions of my subscribers, so you probably made the right choice there, OP. I've seen some stuff really go off the rails and turn into a witch hunt, which it really shouldn't because, you know, this guy's just trying to lead his life and we're just having a laugh at his lack of self-awareness. But at the end of the day, I do hope that he becomes more self-aware, becomes a better person and gets it all figured out. I'm curious if Artbeard actually even knew how to play a guitar or if he just built one for the fun of it. <laughs> Either way, this was definitely quite a story. And a good reminder to me and maybe everybody else that we should judge things as they first appear, you know? Just because OP is speaking out of frustration that he tried to help this guy over and over and the guy just wouldn't get it through his head, that doesn't necessarily mean that OP is a douche. That means we're, we're viewing it through a tainted frame of reference, you know? But with all the pieces put together, yeah, Artbeard, he is a mess. But again, I hope that he's not a mess forever. Anyways, I hope to hear from you again, OP. If you'd like to contact me on Twitter or Discord, if you come up with a new story, that would be cool. I'd be happy to share it with uh, all my friends here. Additionally, friends, I hope that you will consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing on this video. Maybe sharing it around if you should like. We've also got a link swarm down in the description. There are some links there that weren't included on the splash page at the beginning of the episode, so I encourage you to check it out. Additionally, you've seen some names popping up on the screens. Those are my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. And I would like to thank all of them, but specifically, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Fair, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Josh K, Candy, Sora, and we also got a new patron today, Ka Aguilar. So a big tip of the fedora to him and all of the rest of you, but not in the bad way, like the cool fedora. Fedoras before neckbeards got a hold of him. <laughs> I appreciate you guys so much for helping me to live the dream. And if anybody else could donate monetarily, that is awesome, awesome. I highly encourage it. But if you can't, don't worry about it. You know, we all got stuff to pay for. We all got to live a life. I just appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. And I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. So wash your hands. It's seriously one of the most important things that you can do. On top of that, I hope that you'll take some time out today to do something that you personally enjoy. Like watching a Red X video. I mean, you watched one, but if you wanted to watch another, I'd be okay with it. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye.